Abu Abdurrahman says, how should I control my nafs? This is a very generic question. How do I control my soul, myself? And why would you want to control yourself or your soul? Usually this is asked when a person loses control, either by doing sins or by abandoning mandatory acts. And he wants to put a stop to that. First of all, in order to control your, your soul, you need to seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal and ask him for assistance. You ask Allah for assistance because the Prophet used to say alayhi salatu was salam, Ya hayyu wa qayyum bi rahmatika astaghith. And he used to call Allah by his beautiful names and attributes and seek refuge in his mercy that Allah does not let him to himself. So, so many times people say, you can make a difference. You convince yourself that you're able to do this. You are strong and no one can put you down. You are the man. And they encourage you to depend on yourself rather than directing you to depend on Allah Azza wa Jalla. And this is a serious offense. We are unable to take and inhale a breath without Allah's permission. So when you tell someone, and I met one of the da'is who had leukemia, and he said that I managed to recover from leukemia by self-convincing. And I trained myself, and I did tell myself that you'll get over it, you have the power, and I kept on doing this until it's gone. And I was shocked. You're a da'i. What are you calling people to? To tawheed? This is not tawheed. You're asking them to depend on themselves. Yes, you have to depend 100% on Allah Azza wa Jal, but also do the necessary means to get your healing process ongoing while depending on Allah, not by depending on yourself and believing in yourself and thinking that your breathing pattern would uh, give you strength and power and you neglect Allah Azza wa Jal altogether. This is wrong. So you have to ask Allah Azza wa Jal to assist you and to help you and to support you rather than let you be your own judge and be the one in control. Give your control to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to also, in order to harness your self, whether evil or good, you have to follow the Quran and the Sunnah. And once you manage to follow the Quran and the Sunnah to the letter, you have to do this while submitting your own will to Allah. So you don't try to logic things. Allah said, do this, you do it. You don't say, what is the wisdom? Show me the justification for that. No, Allah told you to do something. The Prophet ﷺ prohibited you from doing something. You adhere and say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا You have no other option. We obey and we hear and listen. So by submitting your will to Allah, following the Quran, the Sunnah, and by reading the biography of the Prophet ﷺ, if you read the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, you get a lot of power from Allah Azza wa Jal to control yourself and to compare your life to the life of the Prophet and the companions by going through the life stories of the, of the Salaf, of the scholars, of the righteous predecessors. Such type of biographies and life stories would strengthen your Iman and give you a boost to control yourself and evil thoughts. And finally, among the things that would help you control yourself is to look at the consequences. It is fun to play around, to neglect Salat, 
to go out with the boys and party all night long. It is fun to indulge in sins and to live the life of celebrities without any fear of the day of judgment. But it is not as much fun as you think when you think of what's awaiting you. If you are in a race car, in a sports car, a fancy Porsche, or a Lamborghini, and you go from zero to 100 in 3.4 seconds, and you do your quarter mile in 11 seconds, and you do like 300 kilometers in so much, or so many, or so little seconds, it's fun. The adrenaline is pumping in your veins. It's beautiful feeling. But when you think of the people you might kill or injure, or the accidents you can do, when you think of the fine you have to pay or the jail time you have to spend, the lives you might destroy, it would make this beautiful feeling fade away. Likewise, if you see a nice sandwich and it is tasty, smells good, filled with lots of good things, but you know that there's poison in it. All these nice looking, nice smelling, and nice tasting would become detestful for you, and you would not like to touch it because you know the consequence of it. And likewise, when you give your soul and you unleash it, you give it whatever it wants and desires. If you think of the consequences, of the punishment in the grave, of the punishment in hellfire. And before that, the exposure of your sins to the people and they know you, the shame you feel after you're exposed, such feelings gives you a lot of control with the grace of Allah upon yourself and Allah knows best.